Hi, and welcome to my latest video, or maybe it's not quite the latest anymore when you're watching it. <laughs> um, okay, I've had a, a, a good number of requests um, from people asking how do they get Maitreya um, and other mesh bodies that were created or that they have Maya files into Maya Star. Um, and so those are good questions. And some people were having uh, a particular problem with the Maitreya bodies. So here's the, the Maitreya body. I believe it's the, the latest one. Um, as you can see, it's, it's quite huge and it's on its back, um, which is all fine. Uh, that, that, that's not, not, not a big deal. Um, some people ha have wondered why, you know, they can't just use the, the sliders in, uh, you know, in, in this, just on, in a Maya file. That's because the skeleton that this avatar is rigged to is not connected to the sliders and it's much easier to bring the mesh uh, the mesh and connect it to the Maya star skeleton than it is to uh, get a skeleton connected to the sliders <laughs> so that's why you got to do it that way so okay so here is the Maitreya body um, it has a interesting texture on it that uh, I find, while it's interesting looking, it actually poses some problem because uh, it throws throws my eyes off a bit as far as edges and stuff are concerned. So, oh hey, just made a sale. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, I don't know how much it was. Um, let's see. So, um, so I'm going to change this to just uh, let's see an existing material, just a, a standard Lambert. Okay, this is one of the problems I see with the Maitreya body is it looks like it has a bunch of hard edges. It took me forever to figure out what was going on. Uh, what's actually going on are, uh, let me go to uh, display polygons um, for text normals. Oh, now let me uh, let's see, display size. Where is display size? Normal size, I'm sorry. Normal size. Let me bring this down a little bit. That's better. And maybe a little, maybe a little smaller. That's why. Okay. So what's going on here is is this mesh is actually made up of individual faces that are not merged together. So right here, like this corner right here, um, that has a lot of vertices. There's seven vertices right there. So if you go inside the body and select it from the outside, you can see there's seven vertices. And that's one for, you know, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they haven't been merged together. Um, and that's why there's over 30,000 vertices in this mesh alone. And um, yeah, that's not good. Uh, um, it's just, it's just going to add to the to the information that the skin cluster has to have and all that kind of stuff, and it's it's just going to slow things down, uh, especially if you're on an older computer. So um, let's go back to object mode. I'm going to turn off the vertex normals, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit Mesh. It's underneath the Polygons menu. I'm I'm using Maya 2014. Um, and I am going to uh, merge. Okay. And that seems just fine. I'm going to come over here to here. I'm going to increase this distance just, just a bit. Just to be on the safe side that no vertices merge that shouldn't really have merged. But it looked fine because this avatar is so huge that it, that, that the default merge setting was fine. Um, okay, so now it has a lot fewer vertices, uh, only 5,000, uh, so that's much better. Uh, it still has very hard edges, so now we can just go normal, soften edge. There we go. That's much better. Much easier on the eyes. Okay, and now what I want to do is I'm going to delete by type non-deformer history. That will get rid of the merge um, and the tweaks and stuff on it so that it just makes it um, 
a little bit cleaner. It got a little bit cleaner. It got rid of the merge at least. So um, so that when we export it, it'll have probably le it'll have less of the problems because I've already done this in practice, so I know it works. <laughs> so okay, now theoretically, um, you could select all the meshes and export them all in one DAE. I did that before I merged uh, and it didn't work, um, but let's try it now to see if it will. Well, let's first export out each body part so we have it. So, okay, so I'm going to export this out and I'll show you the, I'm going to export it out as a DAE. What happens is if you leave it as a, if you just try to import this file into Maya, uh, into Maya Star, the skeleton's facing the wrong way, it's the wrong scale, all sorts of of problems. Um, so it's just easier to export it out as a DAE, like you're going to export it out to import it into Second Life. Um, it's just much easier to do that and then import it into a fresh Maya Star C. So I'm going to export selection and you can see I already did that. Actually that's the one I uploaded to Second Life. Um, so what we call this a train of body Two. Uh, these are the export settings that I'm using. Um, I've gone over this in other videos, but just might as well go over it here. Geometry, da da da, interactive display mesh. You can have that on nerves. This one doesn't really matter unless you're using um, unless you're using uh, nerves, which you can actually create and rig nerves and upload them. And if you have this set, it will automatically turn it into a polygon. Uh, really nice, really quick and convenient. Um, haven't done much rigging of nerves, but it is possible. I have done a few tests and it's kind of nice. Uh, you want to turn animations off, but you don't want to turn animations off until you make sure you have skins turned on. You can leave deformed models on as well, um, but you got to have at least skins turned on. That's where your skin cluster information is. And even though this is unchecked, see, even though it's unchecked, as long as it's checked before you uncheck it, it will export out uh, your skin weights. If it does, if if you if this was unchecked, even it wouldn't uh, export out the weights. Okay, turn off the cameras, lights. You don't need them. Um, input connections. I haven't figured out how to turn that on or off. There's probably something that you turn on. Um, oh, great! Now my assignment's going to take a second while I click on something. Um, it doesn't really matter if that's uh, on. And now it's not liking my Wacom pen tablet mouse. Okay, that's irritating. Anyway, we'll just go on because, uh, like I said, I've gone over this in other videos. Uh, so, ink input connections is finally on. Uh, turn off automatic. Uh, automatic sometimes causes uh, it to freeze when you export. On some people, it's happened. On on more than a, uh, I've had like three or four people contact me, and it turned out just to be this one setting. So turn automatic off, put it on meters. Uh, that way when you import in Second Life, it will be a normal size instead of tiny. If you've ever imported a DAE file into Second Life and it's tiny, <laughs> um, that means it was exported out as centimeters. You know, and automatic will export things out as centimeters. So you turn off automatic and you turn this to meters. Um, let's see. Um, you want Z up, uh, also you've probably noticed they come in on their side. That's because the default uh, is Y up, but you can change it to Z up. That way everything is nice and cool and it's what you expect when you get it. You can turn off Warning Manager, uh, you can turn off Generate uh, Log Data. I've hardly ever used this. Um, I just sort of leave them on just to have them on. because. But every time you export out of Maya Star, there's going to be some sort of warning message or error that doesn't mean anything. As long as it uploads to Second Life, those are meaningless warning messages um, um, or error messages. Um, but sometimes there might be some information in there if you are having a problem. Uh, but it, you can always turn it back on. I turn off triangulate. Uh, single matrix is fine. Triangulate, it will, it's going to be triangulated when you upload it to Second Life anyway. Um, and that's this way, when you import the DAE file, it's going to be, if the, if the mesh has not been triangulated already, it'll be a lot cleaner instead of having all these uh, triangulated extra edges in there. 
um, film rate, that doesn't matter. Uh, single mesh, I just lay that on there. Uh, Plug-in version that I'm using is from 2014.01. That's the one that came with this particular um, this particular version of Maya. Uh, theoretically, if you're using a newer version of Maya and having problems, you might want to switch to a different Maya FBX plugin. Uh, you can get it. You can find. I believe they still have them available on the Autodesk website. Where if you really need a, a plugin, you can um, to of a newer, older version. Uh, although it is, you are limited to how far back you can go. Uh, I believe 2016. You could probably go back as far as 2013. Um, you know, um, but if you can get 2014 and you're on 2016. Since it's working in mine, that's what I would get. Um, that's if you're having problems. If you're not having problems, don't switch to a newer version, an older version. Um, and so, uh, let's see. Because, yeah, you can also have the set to triangulate here, but I have it turned off. So that way it's all... I don't know why they have it in two different places. Beats me. I just have it turned off on both places. So, okay, so those are the settings that I'm using. And... Uh, I just have my mesh selected, and unfortunately, it is triangulated already, so it's a little going to be a little bit a little bit harder on the eyes when you're in wireframe mode than if it was just quad, than if it was just in quads. But that's okay. It's it's actually a, a fairly decently low dense um, mesh. It doesn't have a huge amount of vertices in it, so which is awesome. That's good. Things will go a lot faster. Okay, so we got it. We're going to export it. Export selection. Okay, we got that. Uh, and it does, does give me a warning, which are meaningless, basically. Um, skin definition, blah, 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 none of that, none of that matters. Like I said, you can turn that off for the most part. Okay, so I'm going to pick the hands. I think I'll do the hands and feet, because I know they came in fine together. So I'm going to export those together. Export selection. Uh, let's see. Matreya. Matreya hands and feet. And you could have a space in between those, it doesn't really matter. And now we're going to export. Okay, and those have exported as well. Um, oh, okay, and here if you need to know what, what you, what what FBX exporter you're looking for or you're using. Just go in your plugin manager, scroll down till you find fbxmaya.mll, and then um, see I have these to auto load, and hit the I button. That's for information. Um, see, what's that? Great. I'll have to answer that later. Let me put this. Let me put this on pause real quick. Okay, I'm back. Um, Let's see. Okay, so this has your information about your plugin. Um, this is the plugin version, uh, you know, 2014.0.1. Um, so, um, and actually, can I? There you go. And that's where it's it's put in. You know, it's installed. It's always on your. It's not in your. Uh, anyway, so this is where it is on mine, and it would be in similar place in yours. Um, it wouldn't be under near where the scripts folder is in the documents folder. It's not in that folder. It's actually in uh, program files, Autodesk, and then your version, and then bin plugins and stuff. Um, you can have more than one version of Maya plugin installed. Um, uh, I've done it. I think what I did is I just went into the original, found the original, and renamed it slightly. Um, uh, you, know, you close Maya down and rename it slightly, then you install a new plugin. So you can actually have more than one version of the FBX Maya.mll um, installed on the computer. You just change the name of this file. Um, so if you want to keep this one, I would name this FBX Maya uh, 2014.mll. And then you can install an older version um, of, of the plugin if you need to. And then you can, you'll have 
then you'll have to restart Maya. Hopefully you'll have, you should have Maya closed when you do this. You don't want to do this when Maya is open. Um, and then what you would find is when you go into the plugin manager, you'd have two FBX, where is it? Oh, there it is. FBX Maya ML. So you'd have a new one that was just the little curse. You would have your old one that would say FBX Maya dot, uh, uh, Maya 2014.mll, which is what you renamed it to. And after you've done the, ins in the install of the older plugin or newer plugin, just depends. If you're if you're on two, if you're on Maya 2012, I think you can upgrade to to um, 2014. You can usually upgrade uh, your plugin one or two years forward or one or two years backwards. So this works either way. And then you would have after you installed the new plugin, even if it's older or newer, whichever it is. Uh, you would have an FBX Maya.mll, which would be the new one, and then you just load it. One quick thing is never have two loaded at the same time because they'll interfere with each other. I mean, you know, if you have two, F so just make sure you only have one loaded at a time. Loaded meaning it has a check mark next next to the loaded. Don't auto load them both. You can auto load one that you use most of the time, uh, so that when you open up Maya, it's, it's upgrading and available. Um, but just make sure you don't have them both set to auto load and that you never have both of them. So if you had one set to auto load and you started the program, you, you go, oh, I need to go to this older version or newer version, uh, uncheck the one that was loaded and put a check mark next to the other one. So I learned that the hard way. <laughs> um, okay. So that's the plugin manager. And then all, to load it, you just put a check mark. I don't think you, I usually click refresh, but I don't think you even have to do that. You just have to put a check mark next to load it. Um, and it will load. And then you don't have to restart Maya. You just go File, Export Selection. So, okay, so we've got that stuff ex uh, exported out. Let's go to uh, New Scene. I'm not going to save this. And I'm going to activate, uh, even though that skeleton was the original skeleton, I am going to connect it to the female bento. That way, if you want to make a female bento rig uh, to it, you can. Uh, so, okay, so here we have the, the um, Maya Star uh, Bento Skeleton. I'm going to import now the DAE, and I'm going in there on my desktop. No, desktop. There we go. So here's the Matreya Body 2. So all you have to do is double click on, oh, I'm going to go over my settings just in case. These are just the default settings that I'm using. So I've never changed these, but somebody was having a problem. There's not many settings. Um, preserve references is what this has. Load, save references, load state, whatever that means. <laughs> I don't know everything. Um, but that's what it, these what the defaults are, you know, uh, range, plane shape, you know. This is what I have. Um, let's see. Uh, these are just the settings that I'm using. So if you have similar settings, or if you have similar options, but they're different for the defaults on yours and you're having a problem, try these settings. You know, there's not many of them. You can try those settings. Okay, so now I'm going to import the Matreya body. And it came in. And I'm going to hide. It came in with a couple of new layers, too. Um, like partial, oh, I guess. Yeah, it somehow kind of put my skeleton on this layer. Don't know how. And there's the the, the body. So this is the, the body layer. It automatically did that for you, so that's really awesome. Um, let's see. I'm going to hide the upper body so we can actually see this body. Now everything looks fine. Now there's a little bit of a gap in the neck for some reason. Uh, but the test one body that I did that I exported out, uh, it looks fine. So, or, or I shouldn't say it looks fine. That, I think that was left intentional, um, that there was a slight gap. Um, but you'll know that now. Um, and we'll look, take a closer look once once I switch over to, to uh, second line. Okay, so, uh, so what you want to do is let's take a look at the sliders.
Okay, so we have the appearance sliders, and uh, you can go to the different sizes. So it appears that everything's working. Different sizes, uh, body types. These are my body types that I came up with. I don't think anybody ever ever even used these. These were fitted mesh body types. Um, the theory was you um, take your base mesh that you created for the default avatar and then you reshape it to fit this but then you still have the fitted mesh waiting on it so that each each version of these like there's a lot of a lot of girls in second life with with this particular type of body really big boobs really big butt so that this fitted mesh would fit more their type um, the majority of people I would say were hourglass so this would fit the, the majority of people of hourglass even if they had slightly different settings it fits better and then the waif is you know really thin probably less people with this but with these three so you'd have three different fitted mesh versions for the default avatar not 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 matreya body um, for the default avatar that's what this system is for i did a video about this a long time ago like i said i don't know if anybody's even tried it or is even using it but that might be a way instead of the five standard sizes for the default mesh avatar to do it this to do with these three fitted mesh um, uh, for the standard default avatar um, or for the you know the linen lab avatar in second life um, so but anyway that's not for matreya i was just trying out these different settings to make sure everything was working right and if i go to mesh default that's the, that was that should be the bind pose uh, there's the there's the default shape in second life and if we go to bind pose see we get an error see this is good we get an error um and i know it was going to get an error because i've tried this <laughs> But it's good because it teaches, it allows me to teach you a little something about the outliner and about the bind pose. Okay, by default, this is what your outliner is going to look like when you open it up. And so to see everything, you need to turn off DAG only objects or DAG, 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 DAG objects only. Got to turn that off. Um, and then we got to go to the bind pose, which is way down at the bottom. Or almost near on the little bottom. It's a lot. See, look how much stuff is in there. It's all stuff that makes everything work in, in Mindstar. Okay, so now we're going to scroll up and right above where it says auto resize avatar mesh. See, we have two bind poses. Uh, this is bind pose was imported when we imported the, the mesh body. We don't need it. In fact, it's going to cause a problem, and that's why we're getting error here because it was saying there was a transform coming in on the end pelvis and this transform is coming from the second bind pose you want to get rid of it so you just delete it select it and delete it now sometimes um, sometimes this bind pose one which is the original bind pose gets renamed to like bind pose two or bind pose three so you might see bind pose two and bind pose three in here the lower numbered one is always going to be what bind pose one was so delete the higher numbered bind pose and rename the lower numbered bind pose to bind pose one. That's very important because Maya star re depends on bind pose one uh, in there a lot. So um, so now when we click go to bind pose, it's now going to bind pose. Let's see, it went to bind pose. Watch this. Bind pose. Which is the same as the default mesh default. Um, this doesn't get to the mesh default by doing the bind pose. It actually sets the bones to the to the um, mesh default. Uh, so, okay, so that's the the bind pose information you need to know about the bind pose. If you're ever getting an error, and you can get the bind pose error, uh, like if we had gone to the bind pose. And the bind pose looked like, uh, what is it? The earlier versions. Uh, if it looked like this, sometimes when you import mesh this way, uh, it looks like this, especially if you're importing it from Blender using Avastar. Um, uh, in my other video, I go over this. 
If when you click on go to, when, if you click on bind pose and you're not getting the error and your mesh looks like this where the arms look messed up and you can't quite tell that the, the chest bone is also messed up, um, that's just because the bones, the, the collision bones have zero rotations on them, but they, in Second Life, they don't have zero rotations on them. So all you have to do is you would click S, collision bone rotations in SL, and then the next thing you would need to do in order to make this the bind pose, you know, because remember, you clicked on the bind pose and this is what you saw, you know, that's the bind pose. We need to redo the bind pose in that case, and all you have to do is, like I said, go for earlier versions of Maya and click Collision Bones Rotations SL. And then go into uh, Maya Star, go to the Skin Weights Tools, go down to the bottom of the Skin Weights Tools, Custom Bind Pose, Create Bind Pose. And now that's the Bind Pose. Okay, because um, you can create any bind pose you want. Um, you can go like that, and then if you go uh, Maya Star, Skin Weight Tools, Create Bind Pose, and now if I were to go like that and go to, uh, well, I didn't have to click. I didn't have to deselect the bone before I clicked Bind Pose, but okay, Bind Pose. There's the, the fine pose now. Okay, so I'm just going to un, undo. Okay, now that should have gone back far enough. Yep, okay, so we're back to the regular bind pose. So, okay, so right now you're at, you're ready to export out this, um, this mesh. You, you know, you, or you can export out, uh, you can export out, you, you know, create your mesh clothing and copy the weights from and export out. Uh, your weight. So this is ready to go. Um, you can redo the layers and what have you. Um, yeah. See, it took the it took the skeleton out of the skeleton layer, and it put it on this layer. If that's a problem for you, you can fix that. Just select the skeleton, click on that layer, and then remove selected objects, um, or uh, em empty the layer. That would remove all the objects that were in that layer, I believe. Let's do it. Yeah, see that removed all the objects out of that layer. If you didn't like that particular layer, I'm going to undo it since. Um, oops, that was didn't go far enough. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, to get the skeleton, <laughs> I, I I don't want to sit there and sometimes you have to hit Control Z a lot. All you have to do is select the end pelvis to select the entire skeleton. You don't have to do hierarchy, you just have to select the end pelvis or the root, whatever this was. If this was in a group or was to a locator or something, you just select whatever the, the root is. This is considered the root. It's the, it's the lowest one in the chain or the first one in the chain, I should say. So that's the root. Anyway, so um, then you just click on that and Select, holding down the right mouse button, add selected objects, and now that's back to normal. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to um, I'm going to go over to the um, um, to Second Life where I've already uploaded uh, a DAE that I had exported out that was just like this, exactly like this, went through exactly the same process, and I went and I got a demo body of the Matreya body to make sure that it actually is correct, that it actually is fitting that mesh body. So um, I'm going to go over to uh, to there now. And here we are. Um, the The demo body has nothing covering it and I didn't want to be naked. So <laughs> so I didn't want to um, um, so I didn't want to uh, I don't want to be naked. Uh, so anyway, so I'm wearing the body. Uh, it does have quite a bit of poke through, but you can see it does follow the the the, the um it does follow the body, and you can go into appearance editor, edit shape, and um, 
Uh, you can look at the font size. And you see it is the correct weight. And I've gone through a bunch of these sliders and, and they are the correct they are the correct weights. I would like to have not seen so much poke, quite so much poke through in the arms. Um, it may be because this mesh is, a little, is not nearly as dense as the actual avatar itself, um, but this should give you decent uh, tra weight transfer. Okay, now I want to look at the neck real quick. And yeah, see there is a bit of a gap. You can see that just barely see it. Oh, let's see. Uh, where is my inventory? And it, I'm just going to turn it on full bright. Oh, okay, I don't have to turn it on full bright. Anyway, you can see that there is a gap. This is where the neck really is, and this is where it is. So there is a gap, just like there is here. It's the same gap, so everything is fine. Um, um, so, um, but the Maitreya body itself, uh, put the, okay, let me put this on full bright so it's easier to see. Let me undo this. And you can see the, the Maitreya body itself does go all the way up to the neck. There's no gap for the Maitreya body. So there is a slight gap. That's a little bit difference between the two, uh, between the Maitreya body and the, and the demo body. Uh, wrists seem to end right where they're supposed to. Okay, so that's, we know it's actually working just fine. This is a, a good result. Um, so, okay, so let's just go back into Maya and let's import the hands and feet. See if they come in at the same time. Okay, that's the morning. There's the hands and there's the feet. So you can import more than one mesh at a time using this method in one DAE, multiple meshes in one DAE, um, you can. Uh, let's see, and can we go to bind pose, see we go to bind pose again, it gives us that error. So we go to the outliner, and we already have the thing, so we'll go down here, the DAG thing turned off, and there's bind pose too again, and we just delete it. Second line, button post. See, we're back to normal. Okay, um, let's do animations, female walk. There we go. And everything's rigged. Okay, everything is rigged just fine. The way it's supposed to. Awesome. And so, um, Put it back on frame one, or you can just go by and pose. Here we go. Um, let's see. So anyway, so you can you know it looks like it it also put everything on a nice layer all by itself. So you don't even have to make the layers. Oh, and it put the skeleton back on the skeleton layer. I don't know what this skeleton layer is. So we can just delete that layer. And how you, how you delete it? You just click on the layer to select it. Hold down the right mouse button. Drag go, drag your mouse down. Then release on what you want it. Delete layer. So this uh, this body is done and ready. And you would do you would go save to make sure you save it. Um, and now you have the Matreya body ready to go, ready to rig to. Awesome. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think, was there anything else? I'm not going to show that I know the hands and the feet would be fine. Um, if the body was fine, the feet or hands and feet are going to be fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to upload those, um, the second life. So anyway, so that's the Maitreya body, how to get it in. I can actually do it when, in less than three minutes, you know, but going over this and, and talking as much as I, I tend to blabber on about, <laughs> um, it, it's this is a 35 minute video so it doesn't take actually 35 minutes to do this it takes a lot less so probably about three to five minutes once you get used to doing this so awesome have a great 
have a great weekend and we'll see you in the next video.